Hey guys, okay, so I'll do my best to explain, um, I guess, go an overview of what I talked about in my office hours. Um, JP, I know I didn't, but you weren't in the office hours when we talked about querying distributions, but I do want to talk about this for a bit because I can show you how all of this stuff over here is related to um, the prior sampling and likelihood, sam uh, likelihood weighting or likelihood sampling, which is later on. Um, but all of it's connected, just that the way you calculate the numbers in these rows is different. But I, just, I do want to start from the beginning just to show you how it, that's how it works. So, um, I remember one of you guys were asking a question on how you could solve, like in, 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 the, in the problem, you were asked to find something like this, like probability of R given S, C, but you didn't really know how to start, right? Um, I guess this would be an example of how you could start. And I'll try to give you an explanation about how, like the, what the logic is, is, is here and how we're able to find an answer. So just like in the, in the, in the P set, you're given a question where you're trying to solve, okay, what's the distribution of this? The way you want to do it is kind of by just um, working backwards. And it's a bit unintuitive, but I'll show you, I guess, one way you could approach it, which hopefully um, could help you apply that same logic for uh, the problem at hand in the key set. So firstly, when, we, when we're given this, the first thing you should think of is that, okay, how can I simplify all this stuff given all the evidence variables that I have, uh, given all the independences I have, sorry. So of this over here, we can get rid of the C because of, uh, conditional independence. What does that mean? That be, that means that um, the ancestors of a node, given all of its parents, are always going to be conditionally independent from that node. So that means that C, sorry, C is conditionally independent of R given S, right? In this particular case, we're looking for R given S C, but this is because we know C is independent from R because R is an ancestor of C, where we also have also, where we're also given S, we can just get rid of S, a C over here. That's why we can convert P, R, S, C, or P given, P, R given S and C is equal to P, R given C. Um, yeah, so that's why we can just get rid of the C over here. The next step is that just to convert it into a joint distribution and then try to figure out how we could have marginalized that from the joint distribution. So. Remember, because we're, now we simplified it to only R and S, we just look at all of the nodes in between here, R and S, and see if we could make all the shit in between, I guess, our evidence, which in this case is S, and our, our query variable, which is R. Um, see if we could convert that entire thing into a big drunk distribution, right? And that's what we're doing over here, right? We convert R and S into a big drunk distribution. And we want to do that because we can easily convert bigger joint distributions to smaller ones simply by marginalizing over the variables that we don't care about, right? So that's why we do it over here. So we know that we're looking for P of R and S, or the joint distribution of R and S. We can just include T and D into this entire joint distribution when we, I guess, when we say that we're just going to marginalize them over in, in the future, right? And then the last step is that, okay, now that we have a joint distribution, how do you calculate that? And that should just be pretty self-explanatory. You just know that you look at your tables that are given, and you know that, okay, um, I want to find S, D, T, and R all separately, right? To find S, that means I would have to know what T and D are. Or in other words, to find S, I would have to know what S is given T and D, right? Which means we have to have this table or something. For, for T, for, for, when trying to find T and D, right? We know that T and D depend on R, right? Which means that I'll need those specific tables to multiply them out and same with R, but R has no parents. That's why it's just it's by itself. So hopefully, and then we multiply them all out and then you're able to get your answer. So in some ways you're kind of like, you're going like backwards in a sense. Like when you're, when you're looking for this number over here, you have to work backwards just to figure out what the entire equation is. And then you're gonna, once you find the equation is, then you wanna work forwards to plug in all the numbers and to find out um, your results over here. So it is a bit of a pain in the ass, but hopefully that kind of logic helps with approaching the problem. So why is this related to sampling? So it's related to sampling because notice how um, all of these tables are just given to us, right? We don't really think of it, but all of these tables and numbers are just given to us. Uh, but in reality, when we have like a really large data set, we're not, um, it's gonna be really difficult to store all of these numbers for every single, I guess, conditional probability and distribution, right? It's gonna be a huge pain in the ass. So what we could do instead is just by, 
is by sampling the, sampling the data ourselves and building the tables and probabilities ourselves based on our sample, right? So that's the point of this entire lecture part, like where prior sampling, rejecting sampling, all this stuff, right? We know that storing all, this, all of the data by itself is a kind of a pain in the butt, so we're just gonna sample it ourselves. So first I'll talk about prior sampling and I'll move on to um, likelihood weighting, which is the main question that uh, JP had asked at the beginning of um, when, when it came at the end of office hours. So um, in prior sampling over here, say we just sampled five, five samples over here, over like these particular combinations, right? All we really have to do here um, when we're generating the different probabilities is just look at the amount of times they occur and divide them by their total count. So for example, if we're looking at the probability of R, right? We notice that R occurs five times in, oh, four times in all the samples, one, two, three, four, plus R. And negative R occurs once. Because R appears five times, all we have to really do is just, that means we know that the probability of R coming up most likely is just 0 0.8 because all we're really doing is just uh, one, two, three, four, four divided by five, which is 0 0.8, right? Same thing with the minus R, which is one over five, 0 0.2. And the same idea applies to all, all the way over here. So for this one, it's a, tr it's, it's a bit, I guess, tricky, a small note, but remember this is a joint distribution, not a, a you know, conditional probability. That's why it's entire, um, that's why these, sorry, that's why these cells add up to one, sorry, this cell and this column adds up to one, but only this thing adds up to one, like 0 0.6 plus 0 0.2 plus 0 0.2, whereas these kind of, things by themselves, just like that, add up to one, because it's the conditional. Anyway, but the point is like, the logic is the same here, right? All we're looking, looking at is the places where C, where plus C occurs and where plus W occurs at the same time, and the places where minus C and plus W and minus C and plus minus W occur. So if we just look at the entire data set, okay, let's look at all the plus C. So one, two, three here. And from all of that, we notice that um, R, it's, it's plus R every single time, that's why, um, that's why this is zero over here. And this is a positive number. And it's 0 0.6 because in total we have five samples. So that's why we're doing something like three divided by five, which is 0 0.6, right? The idea is the same over here, right? We look at, okay, minus C is over here, um, here and here. But for each minus C, we have a minus W and a plus W. So that's why this is one over five and one over five over here, which corresponds to their probabilities. And again, um, the idea to calculate uh, this part over here is the exact same, except you just normalize because it's a conditional probability. Okay, so now I'll be talking about um, likelihood weighting. So in this particular example, we're trying to find this over here, right? But for, in prior cases, we would just be able to kind of multiply the entire like um, joint table out like, in, back in this um, example, right, we would just make the entire table by just multiplying everything out, but that's really costly in, in, in reality. So what we could do instead is by sampling our data, like in this over here, using our, by sampling our base and our, our current data and using those samples to build a, a P hat distribution like over here, that is something close to what maybe our end goal is actually gonna actually be. So specifically, we're using our current data in the base net, like over here and here, these two tables as weights, right? And based on the distribution of our samples over here, those weights will weight certain distributions or different, uh, um, I guess, comb different combinations of variables uh, evenly or un unevenly. And based off that, we'll, it'll help give us final, find our final answer over here. So again, we're, using, we're sampling our base net data and using the current data as weights. And depending on how many samples we get, we'll get definitely more accurate data. But in general, those weights will be multiplied and added together such that when we finally normalize them in the end, our P hat over here is something close to what this, um, this uh, calculation is actually supposed to be, like in reality. Because it's this, notice how it's P hat over here. It's a little hat. It's not the actual data because we're, um, but the actual numbers that would be accurate because we're only sampling. So let's first start out about what's going on over here. So we, we, we first noticed that if we wanna find something like this, we can simply just break it up into these two probabilities, right? Uh, plus S given C and plus W given plus S and R. 
So if we just look at the the um, entire base node over here, plus s, or, I mean our, our node s has one parent c, that's what's like that, and then our node w has two parents s and r. So that's when we're trying to multiply them together, um, we'll, we'll, we'll get a joint distribution that's like something like this. So now let's talk about what's actually going on over going on over here. So based on our data, right, we know that um, for a positive s, right, given c, there's a is a, a given for a positive s given a positive c, we know there's a zero point one chance of that happening. I noticed that we only care about plus s, right? That's because we're doing likelihood winning, and we we specifically fix our evidence variables to a certain um, to a certain uh, I guess data type, or in this case, boolean value, just to make sure that our um, our data is just more accurate and more constrained in that set, right? So we only really care about when um, the cases when we have plus s and plus w, right? And then from our samples, we only we only take the samples that have that specific combination of plus and s and plus w, right? So if these are our four samples, right? Um, let's look about like how we can actually use them to calculate this table over here. So this first sample tells us that. Um, uh, tells us that we have a plus C and plus R, given that we've already known uh, we have, our S and W are positive, right? From here, we just go to our table and say that, okay, we notice that um, for a plus S given a plus C, there's a 0 0.1 chance of that happening, right? Because we have a plus C over here and a plus S, that's what we need to use this row. Secondly, um, for our, our next term, we have to, what, what to calculate this guy, right? We notice that, okay, we also have a plus R over here, and we also have a plus W and a plus S, which means we just have to use this row, right? So that's why we end up doing 0.1, um, which is this guy over here, times by 0 0.99, this guy over here to get 0 .9, um, 0 0.099, right? And again, the reason why we do this is because we're trying to figure, uh, calculate this entire joint distribution, which is calculated from multiplying these two conditional probabilities together, right? where we fix the evidence variables to be a certain type. Next, um, we just do the same thing for our next sample, right? So in this sample, we notice that, okay, um, uh, given, uh, given that we have a positive C value, right? Um, the probability of seeing a, 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 a plus S is also one, is 0 0.1 again, right? And the same thing for over here, given that we have a positive R, right? Given that we have a positive R and a positive S, the probability of seeing a, a positive W is 0 0.99. So again, we actually do the exact same calculation. So, and this is important because you might think, oh, why do we have two samples that say the exact same thing? Well, that'll be relevant later because we end up adding them together to get this number over here, right? Anyway, but let me do one more example and then I'll show you what actually happens. For this row, right, we notice that, okay, again, we have plus S and plus W, but this time um, we have a minus R, right? Because of a minus r, which this means that we're going to be using this row or this particular, this particular value from, the, from our base net data. So, when calculating our, our final thing, we first uh, we we go to this row and say, okay, we um, given that r is is false and given that uh, s is true, we use um, the probability of w is zero point nine. So we use zero point nine over here, and I guess conversely for over here. Um, given that S is positive, uh, given that, sorry, C is positive, we um, what's the probability of seeing positive S, which is just 0 0.1, which is what we use from actually just the two rows before, which is 0 0.9. And we just keep doing that for all samples to get these different, um, I guess, combinations of, of, of variables, of, of these two variables, right? And once we've done that, all we have to do is just really sum them up all together, right? So let's look at what this row means, right? This row means that, um, What's the probability of seeing positive C and positive R, R together, right? Based on, based on our samples, right? That's what we have a hat here, based on our samples. So we saw that twice, right? So that's why all we have to do is just add up the weights of seeing that twice, right? So we just do 0 0.99 plus 0. Point, sorry, 0 0.099 plus 0 0.099, which is 0 0.198, right? For this row over here, we're saying, okay, what's the probability based on our weights of seeing positive C and minus R, right? And based on our data, we notice that that, 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 that that particular combination of variables only occurred once in this row, right? So we only conclude 0.09 over here, right? And same thing from over here. 
this guy is zero because we've never seen a combination of minus C and plus R, right? Notice how it's always either plus R, uh, plus C plus R, or plus C minus R, plus, minus R, minus C and minus R. So this is why our, our I guess our distribution turned out to being like this, right? And then finally, we just normalize, right? Because remember, if we have a, if we have a conditional distribution that looks like this, uh, I mean, um, a uh, joint distribution that looks like this, we can just simply normalize to convert it into this. We, we convert, we can simply normalize to convert this joint distribution to all this over here, right? And as you can see, all this adds up to one. So again, this is wrap up what we're doing here. Our goal was to find something like this, right? But because we don't want to do the hassle of just multiplying all the tables together because they might be really big, um, likelihood weighting uses the benefits of just sampling our data, right? Sampling our data and using those samples to generate weights. And based on those weights, we can generate a P hat distribution of uh, a P hat joint distribution of what our, of what our, I guess, what we're actually looking for. And then we just normalize to get a, I guess, an estimate of what it, of what our data actually looks like based on our samples that we actually chose. Um, yeah, so hopefully this helps. Um, let me know if I can clarify anything.